Good time's gonna come. Well, Carl, we've got loads of ideas. We've got emails coming left, right and centre. I think you've caused quite a stir. I think you've turned this show around, to be honest. I'm being- honestly. Yeah, no, you've done really well. You're actually acting a bit like a producer, isn't he? Mm. And, mm. uh, you're coming through in your own right. Yeah. Um, we've had a great suggestion We've we? had a great email here. Let me listen, just check, listen to this, Carl. Uh, let me just check this. This, this. this is from, uh, Jeff Dunn. He's a big fan of the show and he's just had a genius idea. He's saying, you're moving house, Carl. Why don't Ricky and I come round? We can do a live outside broadcast from your flat. It's we genius. can observe from your kitchen those weirdos that live opposite. Yeah. We can just maybe just wander around, just see the kind of place that you've got, you know, see, maybe check out your record collection, your clothes, what you've got in the bathroom. It'd be amazing. Your futon. It'd be like Louis Theroux. Wouldn't it? We'd we'll be Louis through. Come on, Carl, this is a dynamite idea. Nah. Why? I, I don't want you coming around making a mess and that. We won't make a mess. mess. We'll, we'll, make a we'll take our shoes off. When, when have I ever made a mess in the studio? Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Do you know what I mean? We're not going to make a mess. What? What? We're not going to have anything with us. But what's in it for anyone? Well, it's just a fascinating insight into yeah, you. Yeah, but, right, when I see that little Chinese kid across the road who's dancing about in his underpants, yeah. that's in the evening, yeah. right? He's not gonna be doing that on a Saturday, <laughs> so you'll be disappointed there. Sure. <laughs> that old, that old woman. But you could sh at least show us the oh, room no, in which he really, dances. Yeah, when you say little Chinese kid, he's a 35-year-old man, isn't he? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, that's But anyway, that, that's beside the point, you know, we'll find our own amusement. <laughs> No, I don't, I don't, and the, the w woman downstairs has got a baby and if we make loads of noise and it's, that gets We're stressed out. We're not gonna out. make noise, are we? Just gonna have a conversation in your flat. Have a cup of tea. Yeah, but if we do an OB, we need to get like a car outside with a big aerial on it and well, the parking's bad around our way. What do you mean you have to do a, what do you mean? To do a outside broadcast. Can't they put in an ISDN line just for the day? No, no, because it'll make a mess of the wall and I'm, I've, I won't give me deposit back. So <laughs> <He's> we'll <laughs> leave that. <laughs> Thanks right. for the idea. You know he's <laughs> going around painting all the little holes, well, uh, to get his deposit back <laughs> in, the, in the wall. <laughs> he wants to get his deposit back. He's probably cost me about 400 quid redecorating. <laughs> 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 Let's remind people, Carl, of the, uh, the prizes for Rockbusters this week. It's right. dynamite stuff. We've got the David Attenborough DVD Nature Collection. We've We've got a number of CDs, The Best of David Bowie, we've got a Madness CD, not quite sure whether that's songs, uh, from the musical or, or their original tunes. Uh, Country Legends, two CDs there of, uh, great country music. Brilliant. And the, uh, remix to XFM compilation. Plus, of course, the big movie prize this week. Um, Hellraiser! Hellraiser! If you haven't seen it already, then I assume you <laughs> have never seen a film before. <laughs> Because I don't know if there's anyone who hasn't seen Hellraiser. But obviously you have to be above 18 to join. Uh, Come to on then. Play the Come on so, How um, long would you want to be around for? Is this just for the... Just for the show. A couple of hours. Two hours. Did you just get the desk in there? Mm. A live OB. We could check out the futon, we could sing it's it check, check the fault in, right? Yeah. Oh, you might have sold that by now. But we could have someone it? come round and buy it live on air. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. It's great. Uh, great what's, uh, how, did, how did Graceland start? Cause that was <laughs> That, well, that was his normal house and then he took <laughs> over. <laughs> right, anyway, Rockbusters. <laughs> yeah, go on. I, I give a cryptic clue. Yeah. And, <laughs> and a letter and it makes up a band. He right? never said the word cryptic a few months ago, I love it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I feel it's like our own little Eliza Doolittle. Yes. <laughs> right, even Richard will like this one. Mm hmm Um, here we go then. First one, there's okay. three of them. Go on. And you email in. If this doesn't turn Dicky round, nothing will. Right. This is an email only competition. Email only. Um, right, here's the first one. Uh, initial is B, so it's B. a band starting with B. Okay. Mm. And the cryptic clue is, I don't like them birds, uh, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. I don't like them birds, they shouldn't be allowed in this area. Next one. Right, the next one. Uh, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a couple of kids, that's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> is that a cryptic clue or is that just- <laughs> Is that just a is thought? That just a general that, point? Is that, that's, yeah. That's the cryptic clue. Okay. And the initials there are PD. Okay. And, uh, the last one, uh, that oh, one. Oh, got that one. That's terrible. That's terrible. Okay, quickly. Oh, <laughs> oh God. And the last one is, uh, oh, God. that bloke who does- <laughs> <laughs> Come on! He's making me laugh. Come on, Carl. Be professional. Right, on. right the last one. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, it's making me laugh. Oh, come on, I'll come and read them then. No, no, uh, hang on, hang on, Come on, Carl. Right, here we go. They don't do this on <laughs> Blockbusters on TV, do they? No, come right. on. That bloke who does sport on telly. <laughs> 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 He's got a little kid, right? Uh, initials DC. <laughs> What? Right. Is that, I'm that completely the clue? confused by that. Was that the clue? Yeah, that bloke who does sport on telly. Yeah. 
who's got a little kid, initials DC. Okay, is that a band? Um. What well, artist? Uh, it's, oh, well, I'm not a gonna cheese. tell you. I'm this not is gonna tell a cheese. Well, no, this is a sandwich. What is it? Is it Fine. a band or not? Right, so just quickly recap. That's okay. It's, 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 it's a come D. on, Carl. Right, come on. Quick, quick recap. The first one is B. I don't think them birds should be around in this area. Right, that's B, right? <laughs> Second one, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a few kids. It's a bit weird. That's PD. And the final one, that bloke who does sport on the telly, he's got a little kid, right? DC. <laughs> All right, and uh, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk if you want to enter for uh, Hellraiser. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll continue to do a little theme here of like some old stuff people haven't heard of. If you're under 30, you've probably never heard of this band. It's also a new thing I want to introduce to it. It's, uh, it's, um, Show Up Camfield. Camfield right. talks the talk, he doesn't walk the walk, he doesn't play some rock classics on his show because he's scared. I'm going to play the tracks that Camfield's too scared to play. Right. This is Kansas and Carry On Your Way With Sun, all right? We're all Nirvana there. Amazing. We're just talking, we're getting excited. Yeah, you've got an incredible brilliant. voice, yes. And Grohl, Dremin, it's, it's brilliant. You know you're right, the new one from Nirvana. Well, we're, it's time for Educating Ricky Part 2, isn't it? I'm excited, <sighs> Carl. I'm, I'm gonna learn so much from this. <laughs> What's the choices again? What's right, you've, got, uh, you've got left. Still, uh, still keep phoning in your answers to, uh, uh, Email. Email, sorry, yeah. Uh, the answers to rock busters. busters. Yeah. Right, okay, Educating Ricky Part 2. Um, right. I'm committed to this treatment. Yeah. Is, is what oh, I've got to go for that one. Yeah? Yeah. Or oh, the other one is the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> he still says it like it's the best thing he's ever come up with, which yeah. is <laughs> It could be. Right, go on in. I'm committed to this treatment. Right. Do you know the saying? Oh, is it just sayings now? Uh Are they all sayings? This no, 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 no. They're not. Okay. No, the other one isn't. Uh Frog in your throat? <laughs> The saying, there's a frog in your throat. Yep. I Absolutely. assume it's uh, when you uh, croak a little bit, you sound like a, uh, a frog. No, no. Right. Might, might sound, seem a bit weird, this one, right? But years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, so, well, what, what is that clue committed to this treatment? It's about frogs committed. Cur Cur <laughs> <laughs> probably works better with a K and an yeah. ER written down. Well, also, if you'd pronounced it committed, yeah, but uh, not committed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> committed to this treatment! <laughs> right, go on then. That's right, genius. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, well, what? You, get, you go to the doctors and you go with throat certain a bit. Right. And what they did ages ago. Ages ago? What year was this approximately? Uh, we are going back quite a bit with this oh, one. Oh, okay. Go on. Um, and the doctor would say, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did history. Imagine years ago. Go on. Um, and the doctor would say, right, keep your, keep your mouth open, I need to look at your tonsils. And the jaw would ache a bit, cause, because they weren't as quick back then, because they didn't have the technology and stuff, and they'd sure. have to like stare at it and study it and stuff. Mm. And like, they get an achy jaw, right? Keeping their mouth open. Yeah. Like, you get, you know, yeah. and you, you yeah. Mars yeah. bar yeah. or whatever yeah. it's yeah. 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 So, um, they, they'd sat there, and they used to always close the mouth, and they, it used to annoy the doctor. Yeah. Right? Sure. So, what they did, yeah. they used to get a toad. Right. And pour it in the mouth. Rubbish. <laughs> okay, keep, Rubbish. The, keep talking. Keep talking. And, um, that way, they couldn't close the mouth because either they'd squash it. Right. Or, apparently, you're not allowed to, uh, lick a toad's back. <laughs> So the doctor would have them for breaking the law? <laughs> no, 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 a boy's poisonous, right? A toad's back. You should never lick a toad's back. Or, or, or put it in your mouth, really. Oh, just, just, it, just, just, just stop no, no, Wait, wait, wait. What, what? So, Can I just ask one question? Go on, yeah, just go ask on. one question. I've got a few, but no, go on. I, I, sure. M my initial thought is, it sounds like a brilliant bit of, of sort of medical, uh, knowledge there. It's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. My only thought is, how does the doctor see past the toad? <laughs> yeah, at your tonsils. What's he actually looking at with the mouth open? Surely the toad is is, is in it the like way. Hopping around in the way. It, it didn't say. No. Uh, sorry, and uh, my my question, my first question is: Was this on the internet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, D uh, Carl, that is bollocks. <laughs> that is, I mean, uh, <laughs> well, all right then. Let's turn this round. Where does the saying uh, "You got a frog in your throat" come uh, from? Probably because you sound a bit croaky. Probably that. <laughs> Probably because you sound a little bit like a frog when you've got a sore throat. <laughs> Carl, did you not question it just for a moment when you read it? Just for a second, didn't you think, that seems an odd approach. Firstly, why a frog of yeah. all the different because species? Because it's poisonous, it's poisonous. A toad. No, so a toad, so it's a toad right. as well. Yeah, well, that he worked, I'm committed, worked. No, 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 no,
Oh, God! Right, so... Right. So, so, so that's rubbish. So that's rubbish. Next, um, can I have, um... <laughs> let's play a tune. Let's come up with a last one. Oh. oh, that was one of the tunes on there. It looks uh, professional. It's amazing. It's incredible, yeah. Oh, he's gone to too much effort. Uh, Ben Queller, uh, it's a track called In Other Words from his album Sha Sha. Open wide. Uh, Oh, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, you're young, You've actually got a frog in your throat. Uh, I, I didn't get there. I put it in there. <laughs> that's the most ludicrous story I've ever heard, Carl. Why don't you think when you read these things? I, d I think there's always going to be a bit of truth in all of these. I mean, that fella called up, didn't he, and said, um, he said, I'm not sure about the, you know, putting a frog in your throat if you've got, ton you know, problems with your tonsils or whatever. But he said, years ago, um, if someone had toothache, yeah. they'd get hold of a frog and strap yeah. it to the face. Yeah, sure. So maybe down the line, you know, maybe they did. Yeah. Maybe they did. Uh, 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 I think Caligula made what is emperor uh, a horse and emperor as well. But I mean, you know, it doesn't go on. Um, Dick Anderson's been back in time. Excellent. Um, I think so. He's obviously, we've turned him round. Well, he loves it now. He's been he? tuning in. He, he says, loves um, it now. He says, Ricky, thanks for a really forgettable two hours of radio. I think I'll spend the time next week counting my feet. That's from Richard Anderson. So, uh, we've turned him round. We've no, do you know where the phrase counting my feet comes from? Well, in the olden days, right, and I'm talking ages ago, when you really loved something, yeah. you used to, as a, as a sign of respect, like, say, a radio show, mm. you'd count your feet. Mm. And that's where that comes from, that's Carl. Where it comes from. Well, what, what about the, uh, the frog thing with, well, a, with, a po with a poisonous back. It's rubbish. That's true. No, the tone toes have um, uh, the, the secretions in there. The, the, why? The, why? Why? They didn't put it in people's mouths. No. So, why? well, I'll tell you why. When a a, 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 a badger or a, a heron tastes the toad, it's horrible. Ugh. The toad might die, but it it's for the, the good of the species because then think how many toads like looking like that heron could eat in its lifetime so the fact that one toad sacrificed itself all those other toads in that heron's manner but, will be but safe. why why i mean you know we we talked about animals a lot on the show right yeah. and when god made a toad sure right, right? okay well so on, i'm going to stop you there i'm going to stop you there stop don't, away don't just let him carry on right okay like there's, there's annoying things out there, you know, jellyfish is a big problem with me. I don't understand why, <laughs> what they do in the sea and stuff. Mm. Right. All right, but we, we'll leave them. Go right? we, we won't, me, but go on. We won't, we won't talk about jellyfish. No. With the toad, right, um, if it's to protect itself. Yeah. Right, now no, say- No, protect itself, it's to protect its species. No, 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 yeah, but that, surely, right, if, if the toad had a choice, if God said, right, what I'm gonna do for you here, um, you can have something like a lobster's got claws, big claws to have a fight. <laughs> or, I can give you something that if someone's having a go at you, you've got to try and persuade them to lick you back. <laughs> as, as a defence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what use is, right, oh, oh my god. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. What is god The fact to? that there are still toads around is a testament to that defence working. That's all I'm gonna say, okay? If the toad had died out, you'd have a point. But they're still around. It works, all right? And all right. don't start slagging God off. <laughs> He's got a lot on his plate. He, I mean, he, basically, I think he took on too much. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly in one week. Exactly, it was crazy. <laughs> Danger High Voltage, Electric 6, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Carl's getting all flustered because I put an elastic band around his head. And we've had a definition of- Well, uh, hang on a second, in the because throat. there's an update to that, Rick. Go on. Um, we did just have, uh, one uh, definition here of uh, a frog in the throat. Apparently this has come from some uh, internet site, so who knows uh, how convincing it is, but it says frog in the throat meaning suffering from temporary hoarseness, needing to clear the throat. Origin from the old English frogger meaning hoarseness. That's from Chris. Now that sounds slightly suspect to me. Why? But, uh, frogger? I mean, it, it seems odd that it would derive from that when it so clearly appears to be, <laughs> you sound like a frog when you, when you have a sore throat. Yeah, but, but, but the word frog could mm. come from Frogger because it sounds I like it's. I think it wasn't Frogger a game you could play on the yeah, uh, yeah on the spectrum. Spectrum. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. listen, hang on, there's an update to that because uh, just to well, the common thing. frog, of course, Rana Temporara. That's the Latin name. Well, you, your toad is Buffo Buffo. You, right. you may be trying to show off, but I think you're about to embarrass yourself as Go well, on. because you've been slagging off young Carl. Yeah. It says here, another email, it doesn't tell us who it's from. Although it's hard to believe now, at one time, medieval physicians believed that the secretions of a frog could cure a cough if they were coated on the throat of the patient. Yeah. That in itself yeah. sounds repulsive, but what makes the idea even worse is the application of the secretions. Instead of painting the treatment on, something which may also have seemed uh, rational, a live frog was placed into the mouth of the sufferer, where it remained until the physician decided that the treatment was complete. 
Right. Uh, apparently Shakespeare's son-in-law, that's a question mark, I don't know what that means. Anyway, it's no wonder that today a froggy or croaky attempt at speech is said to be a frog in your throat. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you can see that what's happened there is Carl's misread or been slightly misinformed about uh, a medieval practice. In a yeah, sense, yeah. you're both winners, just for taking part. <laughs> 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 What's your yeah. final one, Carl? Right, the final story is, um, the police are causing a bit of a stare. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, it's about this fella, uh, I think it's in England somewhere. Yeah. Don't know when it happened, but, uh... Literally ages ago, or...? Basically, well, it's when, I think it's when they were trying to crack down on, like, drunken people walking about in the street. Oh, yeah. And they found this fella. He sat a bit that way. <laughs> and, uh, found this fella, and, uh, all the local people were saying, oh, look at him wandering around, he's, he's drunk and what have you. That's not right. Get the police in. He got arrested and that, and they got him in the court. And uh, the judge was there, and he says, uh, "So you know, what's all this? What's going on? What are you doing wandering about when you've had a drink? You know the rules. Mm. Uh, you shouldn't be doing that. You had a glazed expression on your face. Uh, blah blah blah. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, he only he only had a glass eye. So Did he have two glass eyes. No, he had one. But that yeah. was, th th they were about to sort of lock him up. Was he what, a bit pissed up as well? <laughs> well, he was, he was pretty livid. <laughs> but was he also drunk with a glass eye? No, no, that's oh, the right. weird thing. He right. wasn't even, he hadn't even had a drink. So they just thought, because he had a weird stare. Because, because his eyes were all glazed. Yeah. Well, uh, well, where'd you get this from? Why are you telling me this? <laughs> <laughs> no, why are you telling me this? I don't, I don't, I mean, thank you, because it's, you know, killed a couple of minutes, but why is this educating me? What are you, t what are you telling me because here? Because the, 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 there's a bit of a thing there, a bit of a fable, that don't always judge a book by its cover. Yeah? So, the guy, he hadn't even had a drink. He'd probably just been shopping. Yeah. Uh, walking down the street and everyone's like getting involved, like what's he doing? He I shouldn't. Don't, hang on, I don't understand. He's walking down the street, happens to have a glass eye. He was doing nothing else to suggest he was drunk. You don't pick people up just because their eye looks like oh, that. But even like if it happened, why are you telling me? With no, with no particular detail. Oh. I know this, but then we're gonna get It's not people. enough information. I know, yeah. No, oh. th th there's a bit of a lesson there, educating Ricky, just, you know, just watch what you say. Uh, don't always jump to conclusions. I'm just oh, I, I don't, I think the, the only education I can take from that is that um, if I ever do become a policeman, I shouldn't just arrest people because they look a bit drunk. I should just <laughs> tap their eye with a pen. And go, goes, oh, okay, on you on go. You go. Well, on you go, yeah. Guys, can I just stop you there? I'm just gonna email Richard Anderson and tell him I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Right, listen, we're running out of time and that. Um, oh, we've got how, the where did the phrase we've got, frog in the throat come from? We've got, we've got we've, it here, he's been, he's been told well, it. Well, there's three. Should we play a come out with that? Have well, we got anything lined up? Uh, yeah, we've got the song of the story in it. Come on, okay. Carl, let's do something. Quick, play a record. Song of the story in it. But never mind that, just, they're listening. We, this, we discussed this off air, come on. Play a record. Right, it's Kings. It's a song with a good story in it. You've got to listen to the words. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a song that's got a good story in it. There's a lot of music about these what's days. What's that story that, about then? What's that, that story about? I don't know what they're going on about. Whereas that, classic from the Kinks, called Lola. Yeah, what's it about? Um, I'd listened to it for the first time properly this morning. Yeah. And what I've worked out from it is, is a fellow who goes out for a normal Saturday night out, he's yeah. in Soho. Yeah. He's having a, he's having a Coca-Cola or whatever. And he, uh, yeah. he sees, he sees this woman, and he thinks, yeah, she's alright. Yeah. Won't mind a bit of that. So he wanders over, and he sort of gets to talking to her. He looks at her, and she's got a great figure, nice face and all that. Lovely knob. And, uh, and she speaks, and he yeah. goes, oh, God. Got a bit of a bloke's Frog voice. Throat, yeah. <laughs> got a yeah. bit of a voice like a bloke. But he thought, but, you know, that's her only down point. Sure. Mm -hmm. So he's, he dances around with her, and I think he sits on his knee, I think he said. Yeah. Anyway, it turns out it's a fella. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, a sobering yeah. lesson. Yeah. Um, um what'd you take from that? <laughs> look, always sort of, if you, if you think you might be talking to, uh, a bloke, bloke just, just, just look at it, Adam. He's sort of Adam's apple. Right. <laughs> okay. And he'll probably have a hairier ass than, than a woman. Yeah, I think you've gone too far, then, though. No? I think you've already. I think you're already, you're already getting too close. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit late to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> no, fun intended, definitely. There was a fun intended. Oh, was it? Alright, was it? Yes. Oh, Alright, oh, alright, okay, we well, don't be disgusting then. <laughs> right, okay, right, um, the, the, uh, results of, um, what was this? We ain't got a winner for the first time. Yes, uh, we, we have, we've, we've got done this feature for- We've got loads of winners. No, we haven't. We've done the, this feature for three weeks. This is the first time I've, um, I've managed to sort of- What? Well, let's go through them then. They're what have they got wrong? The first one. The right, first one. What the was first the first one? Well, well, well hang on, let's just, let's, just, let's do them in reverse order for a second. So what's, what's the last one? The last one, the clue was, 
that bloke does, uh, does sport on the telly and uh, he's got a little kid. What's that? That's Destiny's Child. Des, who does ITV Sport, oh, that's he's got a tiny child, right? No, that's, they, that's fine, yeah, they got that. that. Destiny's that. Child. What's the, what, what's the middle one? Right, the middle one. Tiny child. <laughs> right? Tiny child. The second one was, yeah. uh, he doesn't like women, yet he's got a couple of kids, uh, that's a bit weird. Yeah. Right? That was PD, that was Puff Daddy. That is offensive. Go on. But it's not Puff Daddy, it's Puff Daddy. And he's not even called that anymore, he's called P Diddy. Well. Okay, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but they got that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and if, so if I'm being tight, these lot are as well. Yep. Yeah. Um. Tight means mean something in Manchester. Go on. Right. And the first, the first one that they, they're having problems with, I don't think them birds should be a, allowed in this They've area. They've got it. Boyzone. Boy it's not, it's not Boyzone. It's, the, what's the clue again? I don't think them birds should be allowed in this area. That is perfect. A boy zone. No birds. No women. No women, yeah, birds, right? A boy zone. Sorry, Carl. If that isn't the answer, their clue is better than yours. That is brilliant. What was yours? Boy zone, it works perfectly. What's your answer then? Bangles. <laughs> what? I have no idea what that means. Like seagulls. So you, you don't want them in this area, so you're banning them. Bangles. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! Well, give it to Boyzone, because Boyzone's better. That is very loud area, it's a Boyzone. I boy think zone. we should have a rollover. <laughs> Carl beat them. Carl beat them. You have to use his logic, surely. But there's works. You can't do what am I thinking. No, that's not what I'm thinking. It perfectly, it works perfectly. I think you've got to give it to the, the ones that got the, the Boyzone. Well, how about, right, because they didn't actually get into my, my head that I'm well, not thinking, right? Forbid. How about we just keep back the David Attenborough, and they can have, I'll chuck in the Hellraiser. Right? <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> Blondie album and the Madness yeah, one. Yeah, okay, pick a winner at random. Pick Steve. a winner, Steve. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Paul Sloman, who got those answers, and he also says, P.S. Carl, you're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Give that to Paul, and uh, good luck to him. <laughs> right, well. He's got a crazy night uh, well, tonight. If we can rush these over to him, he's got uh, a cracking yeah, uh, Saturday yeah. night. Well, well, if I'm a moron, I might get your address wrong when I send them to you. Ooh! Oh, yeah. Coming yeah. right back at you, Paul. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you want to play a song? Is this oh, the God, God, I was annoyed, because they did get banned girls. A song from, uh, a song for the ladies. I think we seem to have missed this a lot of weeks, but, so uh, this sure. is, uh, I've been wanting to play this for ages. It's not like us to forget things in that. This is a band at Frente, who kind of came and went and oh, no yeah. one was particularly interested, but they did this, do this lovely acoustic version of the new order tune, Bizarre Love Triangle, oh, right. and this just shows you how incredible the melodies and the, and the words and everything are. Brilliant, I'm uh, new order, just uh, play this. Good night. Bye bye. Is this the end of the week? Do you reckon Richard Anderson will be back next week? Yeah, week? Richard Anderson will not miss this show. Excellent. Uh, I think I might have worked out. What, what, what is, he's, he's walking backwards, it's all filmed backwards, but he's singing forward. Now, the only way I can work out they've done it without CGI in it and cheating with the lips is that he had to. Learn, learn it, it backwards, backwards and did it sort of like bit by bit. Did he do that? He was on Zoe's show like about a week ago. Or oh, so he, he sang it backwards. So he learned phrases and they filmed that. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't learn the whole song, did he? They must have. He couldn't possibly have learned the whole song. He must have like stopped it and. <sighs> I don't know. I it's a great video, though. They always do a good video. No, it's very good. Very good indeed. So it was, uh, yeah, The Scientist on XFM. Wonderful one. I'm Ricky Jemais with me, Steve Merchant Hello. and Carl Pilkerton. I had a bit of good news this morning. Go on. Um, I was on the tube coming down, and, uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant, I don't want to sound pushy, but, um, I was at Green Park, and I'm fairly certain, Rick, it's not 100% corroborated, I'm fairly certain that a woman pinched my arse. So what do you think of that? Yes. There's, uh, there's a lot of pop, uh, pickpockets around the green No, 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 no. My wallet was still there. Really? But even if it wasn't, you know, that would have been money well spent. But, <laughs> the, but, 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 the, but the wallet was still there, so how, <laughs> what do you think of them apples? Hey, so what did you just pinch off? I don't. Them? I can't confirm it at this stage. Uh, exactly what happened, but it certainly felt like a pinch. I looked round. There By was a woman. There was a woman behind me. Right. She was fairly old. She was. I think she's probably in her mid thirties. Right. Um. Kind of reddish hair. Right. Uh, I don't know if she's listening. Right. But uh, she knows where I am. And um. So I don't know how to proceed, really, Rick. I don't know if it's worth putting up some posters <laughs> around the Green Park area. Well, what you could just do to try and corroborate well, it. If you saw a woman pinch the lanky you guy's eyes, no, well, you, could, you could probably get in. Uh, a contact with British Rail and look, go back over their CCTV Exactly, thing, CCTV cameras, yeah. And then they could probably zoom in and, you know, sort of identifying sort of birthmarks or <laughs> exactly. she might have been holding some up. Then I could hire a private eye. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. Again, money well spent. <laughs> well, so, uh, so there you go. You know, I'm just so, saying. I mean, I'm just saying. Maybe the you know maybe things are looking up. Things are towards Christmas. To the worm was turned. Hey? I don't. I, I mean, you know, it's a little uh, sexy story to get the show <laughs> going. It is. It is. But, but, so what do you make of that then, Carl? Because I know you're quite damning. Um. What's your answer? Well, I mean, you're quite a, quite a tall fella. Sure. So, she must have really wanted to sort of reach up and <laughs> and have a pinch. Mm. Do you know well, what you mean? think she, she was a dwarf? She, she did it with her teeth. He didn't say she was a dwarf. No, no, but Steve's taller than, you know, his arse. Yeah, but his arse isn't six foot nine, is it? Oh, his arse is about three foot off the floor. F four foot? What? Four foot off, off the floor. Uh, no, I don't think so. About three. She'd have to be a midget to have to reach up to pinch Steve's arse. He is very tall, but... Yeah. I don't know what your point is there, Carl. You're just, you're just trying to, you're, you know, you're just, uh, no, no, I think maybe you're just a little bit jealous. Just a little bit uh, of jealousy. Well, do you know what happened to me on the way in? Go um, on. Homeless person called me a dickhead. <laughs> How did he know? <laughs> <laughs> do you know him? Is right, that why? He's a local, he's like the local big, no, well. big issue fella. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he know, he knows me, he sees me walking up and down the oh, street. Oh, that's how he knew you. Right. So, um, so normally I have a, have a bit of a chat with him and that, and I walk past him. And, um, <laughs> we're, we're, you know, I can, I can be a little bit cheeky with him, because I've been cheeky with him in the past, with stuff. Um... You pinched his eyes. No, no, <laughs> just, you know, saying stuff like, God, you're always there, I mean, you got home to go to, and... Uh. <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, no, just he, breaking the eyes, just breaking the eyes, go no, on. He knows, and he'd laughed at that, right, yeah, last time, yeah, so I thought yeah. I can be a bit cheeky, right? So he goes, uh, he goes, do you want a, do you want a big issue? I said, no. Nah. He said, come on, I've got loads of them, right? So I, I sort of said, oh, w when I was a kid, and he used to do a free paper around the free papers one. I said, just put them in the bin and go home. <laughs> right? And he went, yeah, but how am I going to get any money doing that, you dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> you see, yeah. I can see his point. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. is homeless and having to sell newspapers to get 50p or a quid or whatever. Yeah, uh, and, and sometimes I treat him, right? And today I didn't have any money. I had a takeaway last night and I normally give them a quid and I felt bad not being able to do that because I didn't have any money on me last right, night. Right, I couldn't look him in the eye. Did you night. explain this to the homeless person, the traumas of the takeaway <laughs> without the tip? <laughs> Did you explain that, you know, y you've had it hard as well? Yeah. I mean, look, you don't I had food delivered to my warm flat. Yeah, it was yeah, you don't know what that's like. You don't know what the trauma is because you can't have food delivered to your flat because you haven't got one. So please don't look at me like that. You should have said. But most people ignore him. At least I gave him a bit of acknowledgement and sort yeah, of- Yeah, took, took the mick. Yeah. I didn't think I was, I just was being yeah. friendly. Yeah. No, I know. You gotta be careful with the homeless, cause I- this is true, this is true, and this is- I, you know when the clocks went- was it the clocks went back recently? Yeah. So you got an extra hour in bed? Yeah. And um, I was at cash point with a friend of mine, and there was a homeless person sat by the cash point, <laughs> and um, was, you know, we would get some money out, she said, spare some change. And my friend's like, oh, he's a bit awkward, he's just trying to make conversation with her, he went, oh, clocks go back. Extra hour in bed. Oh no. I gave her two quid. I felt so bad. <laughs> oh, he didn't God. do it intentionally. He didn't no, realise no. what he said. Oh, just no, making just conversation. Bumbling. It's oh. tricky making conversation with the homeless because there's so many areas you can't, you've got to avoid. You know, oh, what no. was on the telly. Yeah. You know. Although I get recognised by homeless people and they are, are they, I don't know where- Well, you've got to remember that's very much your demographic, Chris. <laughs> yeah. You know, Dixon's people, people who watch TV through the window in Dixon's. Yeah, in Dixon's. Yeah, there was a- Ricky Gervais is on. Yeah. The well, they, they can smell the alcohol on you, they think you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've had to cut down on that. I've all been really good with this training thing. The boxing. Uh, oh, oh, play a record and I'll tell you about it. I had my first week of training. I'm- I'm in trouble. I'm struggling. What do you want to play? Oh, we've got a bit of, uh, have we? Stone Roses, classic. Feeder, come back around. XFM 104.9. Ricky DeVay, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, st I had my first week of training for this, um, charity boxing. Um, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm fighting Grant Bovey, uh, Anthony Turner's husband. Um, it's, it sounds arbitrary, but it's actually because he's, uh, at 41 and about my weight, a bit taller, I think. But, uh, and we've never done it before, but, um, no, it'd be, it'd be fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Battling someone for charity. <laughs> yes. Um, no, but, um, it, it, it's, and I can't believe my luck, because I've, you know, I've been a fight fan for, like, 30 years, and, um, and they took me shopping, they bought me all the gear, and uh, the training's great. It's really hard. I mean, it's, 
uh, I imagine it'd be really hard, and it's probably slightly harder than I imagined. And the only bit I like, so the, 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 I, I, I don't like all the exercise and all the stuff you've got to do. I like the bits that look a bit like something I've seen in a Rocky film. Right, sure. You know, sure. we did that thing with the, uh, the string along the ring and I have to pop up and punch and that. Right. That was great. Right, nice. I, skipping's not bad. I'm trying to get good at that. I like that ball that you go. Yeah, yeah. Are you any really good at that? Is that uh, I'm getting, getting good at it. Uh -huh. quite, I'm, 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 what's well, that teaching you, that particular thing? It's just uh, the rhythm, is it? Uh, it's, it's rhythm and, of course, your arms are up for that long, so it, it, you've got to keep your guard up all the time. Yeah. So that teaches you to keep and your you arms were, up. And you were, uh, up at six this morning, you broke some raw eggs into a cup and <laughs> you ran up the steps of the town hall, didn't you? I know. Well, with those of people following me, and I shouted, Bovi! <laughs> at exactly. the top. No, I'm not going mad, I'm not going mad, just, sure. just, 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 you know, once every, you know, every other day. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm struggling now, I've, 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 I've I woke up saying it was like I'd been hit by a car. Yeah. Just everything aches, so I must be having news. But, um, anyway, I had a meeting, uh, the first time with the, with the people, the program makers, because they're following me for a month and everything, and Grant as well. Um, and they said, oh, um, uh, you'll need a sort of nickname, just for a laugh. And I went, oh, what's Grant using? And they said, oh, I think it's going to use gorgeous Grant Bovee or Grant. I went, oh, I don't know, um, oh, gosh, I, better go, I better go against that. Um, what about, um, Ricky Gippo Gervais? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, right. Uh, uh, like, yeah. So but anyway, I had a fit with Frank Maloney meeting the next day, and uh, it's sort of uh, uh, you know you got to do this nickname. And the bloke said, "Oh, I checked out that name. You can't call yourself Jip." I went, "Well, of course I can't. <laughs> I was joking." He went, "Well, I said, well, it's racist. I was joking. I was making a joke about me." But and then he went, "Oh." I don't know. And then uh, I went down to get the, um, buy all the gear from this shop. They had the dressing game made? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was picking all the stuff, I was going, oh look, that's like Naz War. Oh look, that's like Ali War in the, and I'm going, I'll have that, I'll have that, picking all the gear and everything. And, um, there was a couple of boxers down there, sort of like looking at me, thinking, who's that fat bloke taking yeah. that boxing at 40? And, uh, and I said who I was, and I and the uh, bloke went, oh yeah, how are you doing? I went, oh yeah, so how long have you been in the game? He said, I've been boxing 20 years, so how many fights you had? He said, about 40. And I, and I said, oh yeah, help me, I've got to think of a nickname. And I thought, I said, uh, I thought, uh, Ricky Balboa Gervais. He went, right. I went, or oh, Ricky Marciano Gervais. He looked at me and went, what about Ricky Martin? <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, dear! Absolutely just. Yeah, I, I, I'm not respected yet in the boxing world. <laughs> no, sure. But I mean, you amount of time. Once well, they, see you, fight, once they go... see you fight, Rick, <laughs> everything's gonna change. So uh, that have you good. actually have you actually punched anyone yet? Have you actually not any? No, no. I've punched, punched... I punched pads and I punched the uh, the bag and I've sort of sparred and that. And are you gonna and get a chance to well, punch? Well, someone? as I suspected, um, my my punching power's all right, but my fitness is. I mean, it felt like I was smoking. Yeah. You know, but there's you know bits of lung that haven't been had oxygen in them for 20 years yeah and it's ridiculous and also because it's not only it's being filmed but there's the other fighters there that are ridiculous they're like machines mm, right mm. and it's that thing i go i can go right i can i can come out on top but die in, now of a heart attack but never give up or yeah. i can sit down and go i'm sorry i'm i yeah. feel ill and i chose that one and of course they took them in well of course and but i mean you know soon uh, you know as i said i haven't got the respect yet of the <laughs> boxing fraternity <laughs> but and how long like, have you got them before four uh, weeks okay so yeah. and, and do they think that they can turn you around health wise in that time? Uh, no, or they're going to be coming out Zimmer No, plane, they're going to they're going to you know they're they're going to teach me the ba basics and see how it goes. You know, right. but I mean, um, you know, and I'm each sure. round is four seconds. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, two four second <laughs> yeah, rounds with, with a yeah. two hour break in between <laughs> each one. <laughs> a sit down um, meal. So uh, give the number. I want I want serious suggestions of my fighting name. Nothing insulting. So what we can actually use. Well, let's give out the, the email. BBC. That's always the easiest. Ricky yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. At xfm.co.uk. What's the number, Carl? Um, oh eight seven hundred. 800 one, two, three, four. And it doesn't have to be in the middle, it could be at the beginning, like okay. <laughs> the rage. Okay. Ricky, yeah, yeah, Ricky yeah. the Rage. Ricky the, the Tits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Ricky the man, rest player yeah. record. Team suggestions for you. This is one from Matt, I think. Uh, he's given a couple, actually. Ricky the Pudding Gervais. <laughs> uh, uh, Ricky Big Mac Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, the, there's a theme here. Ricky Pasty Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> the Pasty. I quite like the Pasty. That's it comes great, the Pasty. It? <laughs> good, as Carl said, he says, the thing is, if you have a really good nickname, it's embarrassing when you lose. Whereas if you just call yourself yourself, it's not so embarrassing when you lose. Carl, this is doing so good <laughs> my ego. <laughs> well, do you know what I mean? If you have like killer Gervais. Yeah, and then you end up like vomiting, yeah. choking on your own vomit upside down, <laughs> hanging out the ring. What happens if you win? Do you have to 
Juice Whereas the there goes the pasty being stretchered off <laughs> in the first two minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's not such a problem. <laughs> there he is being lightly basted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and chucked down a mine. <laughs> what do you mean, what do I have to do? Say if you, say if you beat Grant, say. Yeah. Say if that, if that happened. Yeah. yeah right. Um, <laughs> do you, do, what, what happens next? What do you mean, what happens? What? Do you think, oh, this is a, a contention fight for no, the no, big no. one? But do they, <laughs> they, 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 yeah. Well, then we make Ricky too. <laughs> 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 no, but, you know, <laughs> do you know if they're planning on making more money? Because it's for comic relief, isn't it? So what happens on the night? No, it's, it's, go, no, it's for a charity of our Comic choice. relief would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. whatever, right. Yeah, it's it was last time. I think it was last time. Is it sport relief? relief? It's not sport It relief. was last time, oh, right. yeah, but this is, I think this is a program where the- and, and how do we, sorry, how does this, how do you make money for charity from this? Do we, do we pay to, to sort of, for how many punches to the head you're gonna take? Or no, no, I just How think long you're gonna last? I assume the BBC donate- Money or someone, or a sponsor or whatever, so I don't know. Just right. donate. Because it's actually a program. This is more about a program with a, I think, I see, a, I a see. charity angle. So, uh, yeah. So, as if if you get, like, killed, there's more money and food to go around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but no, I mean, the thing is, what's the next step? Because if they go, like, right, yeah, well done, you've won. Thank you very much. Well, Carl, what do you expect? That, that, that it's winner stays on? <laughs> yeah. Like in a fair, <laughs> where I go out there and I'd let people right, punch me. Right, on Bruno Manning. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then my twin gets up. Yeah. What, what, do, what, it's just a, it's a program. He's it's not like, gonna turn it's, pro. It's like faking it. Yeah, but what's the point if he's not gonna go anywhere? Well, look. A what, a sorry, him fighting Grant Bovey in a ring is not entertainment enough. <laughs> yeah, what's the matter with you, Grant? Grant's gonna get his face pummeled in. That's gonna be no, hilarious. But, like, when I did boxing at the youth club, once right? when he did boxing, he fought once. He fought a little weak kid because it was his first day. Battered him. Next week it was someone else's turn, and he got bad and he left. <laughs> yeah, I said right, I've had enough. But there was, there was <laughs> yeah, there, there was a ladder there that I had to work. Right, and I decided after the sort of the, the first step, I thought it's not for me this. Mm. Yeah. But if you win, it's all kind of like right. Well, yeah, the world's your oyster. But it's a program. It's just a one-off program, isn't it? It's it's like it is like you got to treat it like faking it. Yeah, but faking it, right? That little gay fella who ended up being a doorman, he's actually doing that as a proper job now or something. He loved it so much. <laughs> Do you seriously think I have any intentions of getting into the fight game and leaving <laughs> entertainment behind? Well, what's the point then? <laughs> what do, What do you mean? What's the point in What's What's the point in watching television? It's entertainment or educational. I, I watch it to sort of soak in. Well, this is educational. I'm learning a lot. I'm actually learning a lot, and it's I can't believe my luck. I've got professionals telling me, you know, hopefully how to lose weight and punch hard. That's just fun. It's like like having golf lessons. Right. But say, I mean, here's an example. Go it's on. A, it's a nice way to plug it. We've got Rockbusters coming up in about ten minutes or something, right? <laughs> Now, Look forward to that. <laughs> people, yeah. people email in, and they don't just do it for fun. They do it because they know they've got some good prizes lined up. Right. So they're doing it because it gets them something. Yeah, my my prize is that I've learned something in life. I've gone through an experience, and hopefully I'll come out in some way better if I don't <laughs> get mashed. That's it. That's uh, the prize. That's why we do anything, isn't it? I think this is this is an example of you, Carl. Is that you give up too easily. Yeah, you think there's no point in anything? I did. I did Crusaders for. A, I think I, I lasted that out for about four weeks. What's that? Crusaders? Well, he was my mate, right? He, uh, <laughs> he, was, he, he was religious. Uh huh. And I, I'm not, really. Um, but. No, I mean, you believe in ghosts, though, and shadows pushing people off bikes, but go on. But it's the same time. I think I told you once before that I went to the church with this lad because right. I swore and he said he was going to tell me dad. Yeah. That was <laughs> effing and jeffing. So he said, if you come to. <laughs> <laughs> is that how they get people to church nowadays? I, I love that one kid that, yeah, he hasn't quite got, uh, got the idea of the protection game. <laughs> There's nothing in it for him. Either you turn to religion or I tell your father. <laughs> right, so, uh, so I went to church with him and that, and then the next week he said, I know that was rubbish and you didn't enjoy it. It's when I got kicked out for messing with the tennis ball in the pews, right? I don't think we've heard that, but I don't think we could possibly <laughs> right, go into that now. Summed it up. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Well, no. No, come on. We'll come back to that. That's, that you okay. had a tennis that's ball once in pubes. <laughs> no, in the views. In the views, right. Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> I, I went there and I said, I don't think much of this church thing, it's a bit boring. Um, <laughs> Sorry, and so you went to church and you ended up in the Crusades? <laughs> 
No, the, it's, called, it's called the crusade? Cru Crusaders. What it is, it's meant to be the fun part of religion for kids. Uh -huh. right? right. And my mate said, oh, you want to come along? It's, uh, you know, you go on a Friday night yeah. and uh, do it on a Sunday as well. Right. So I went on the Friday night, it was brilliant. He had Tabutio. <laughs> uh, table tennis in this dead big old house. And what do they do right. at the end? Say, I hope you enjoy yourself. Remember, God gave you <laughs> yeah. all this. Well, yeah. it's sort of you know enjoy the simple things in life. You don't need computer games. You can play uh, table tennis and, uh, mm -hmm. and talk with your friends. Yeah, and blah blah blah. So yeah, that's all right. I think you'd right. be happy in a young offenders institute. <laughs> <laughs> You get to clean the toilets there but as well. But don't forget, Carl, I think God invented Nintendo too. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, so that was alright. I loved it on the Friday. Yeah. And my mate said if you go for four weeks, four like weeks in a row without missing a day. Yeah. Uh, you get a free badge, you know. And like, salvation. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like <laughs> yeah. all this sort of yeah. being stuck in stuff. Do you know right. what I mean? That's yeah. 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 I mean, it's like, oh, every day. Yeah. Right. So, um, anyway, so, so you've got to come again on Sunday, so I thought, well, we'll have another game of table tennis, it'll be all right. Yeah. So anyway, I go on the Sunday. <laughs> Who was oh. this? Who was this servant of God? Right. <laughs> 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 I go on the Sunday, it's like a totally different club, there's no table tennis. <laughs> That's how they trick you. No Sabutio. Yeah. They start handing out Bibles. Oh. And it's I like a timeshare like, thing. Hang on a minute, right? They trick you. So, so I didn't go again on Sundays. I just go on the Friday. Just go on the Friday. Brilliant. And brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I'm amazed no one else saw through that. <laughs> well, the thing is, there used to be loads there on the Friday, so they, they won't even notice if yeah. I'm not like. Yeah, do you sure. Know what I mean, mm. that I'm not showing up on a Sunday. So anyway, uh, carried on. It was just this kid in the vicar. Oh, I love that. You you got one over on the church. So yeah. I, I was loving it, right? Playing table tennis and that, yeah, and no then uh, on a Sunday. <sighs> They found out where I live, and the head fella started coming round, knocking on the door. God, <laughs> <laughs> he's everywhere. Rick. <laughs> Why did he knock? The fella, for like this. The fella <laughs> who like ran the club, he started coming round, knocking on the door, and I saw him coming up the path, and I said to my mum, "Oh, it's the fella from the Crusaders." Yeah. She didn't even know what I was. No, in. she, she, she thought, thought you were off nicking hot cats and stealing cars. She yeah, didn't yeah. Have a clue what I was it's talking about. You've been going to church. You've been to church. I don't you believe it. Little bleeder. That's not how we brought you up. <laughs> So, uh, I said, look, just tell him I'm, I'm not in, tell him I'm not in, and she had to keep doing this, and they were coming round every Sunday to try and make me, like, go, yeah. go on a Sunday, it was really yeah. important that I went and yeah. that I was abusing the system and all this. Anyway, I didn't go, um, and then- Why then, didn't they just tell you on the next time we turned up on a Friday? <laughs> yeah. No, well, I, I, because there was so many people there on a Friday, you just get mixed in in the crowd. Yeah. Right. It was jammed, it was well popular on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But anyway, on one of the Sundays, um, it was, it was quiet for a bit. And, um, they stopped coming round, so I thought, right, I can go out again, right, on a Sunday, because I used to avoid hanging around the house. In what case sort yeah. of reign of terror? <laughs> yeah, this is incredible. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I thought, right. <laughs> like the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, great, they forgot about me. Yeah. Uh, everything, I can carry on in sort of normal life now. Yeah. And I was playing out in the avenue, fella comes round. Oh. And he goes, there you are, you, oh, you, you know, you're always busy on a Sunday, uh, you enjoy Fridays and that, don't you? I was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, come on, you've got to come with me. And I couldn't get out of it. No. I mean, uh, it's like, what could I say? Charlie says. Right? Yeah. So, um, anyway, he nearly killed me in a car crash. <laughs> So that was the excuse I used next time. He had a Mini, right? And right. he was driving us there and he hit the curb, nearly sort of turned over the Mini. Oh. Right? There was like three of us in the back. So, I said- <laughs> That record. So, next time- was it came, a joke? Next time he came round to pick us up, I said, look, really enjoyed it and that. I said, but ever since that journey, I really, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in the car with you again because you scared me a bit. I right. said, all right then, I didn't have to go again. That's all right, isn't it? That's extraordinary. Yeah. He almost killed you in a car crash. That's terrible. Thank, thank God no one was hurt. Mm. Yeah. I remember that-, that Your life moves in incredible ways. Yeah. Rather like God. Yeah. So, uh, so they're, pro go. they're probably round there now, aren't they? Go, is he coming tomorrow? Is he co <laughs> <laughs> what we got? So well, oh, we're talking about the prizes next. Well, let's talk about the prizes. We've got the, yeah, we've got the big game Rock Busters coming your way soon, Rick. I know you're excited about that. And like, is there more educating Ricky this week? Have you got that planned? There is. We are struggling on that feature a bit now because I feel like we, we've covered a lot of topics. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I know. Well, I know about hairy Chinese kids yeah. and deaf people that hit their head and can hear again. Sure. So I don't think there's lots more to learn <laughs> in life. And the amazing Carl Pilkington. Right, prizes. Yes. Listen.
Rockbusters. Yeah. It's, uh, one of the big exciting quiz shows, and this may be one of your last chances to play. There's rumours that it's gonna get ditched, Rick. Rumours <laughs> 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 uh, that Carl Wilkinson, the creator and mastermind behind it, has already <laughs> grown tired of it. <laughs> it's off from the way. You heard them earlier on, the very best of the Stone Roses from that. We sure, played, uh, sure. I Wanna Be Adored. That's one of the prizes. That's a nice little, uh, Christmas compilation. Second hand now, then, really, isn't it? Second hand. Yeah. yeah. 50 years of the greatest hit singles. I'll tell you there's some great stuff on here. Oh, opens, on. Rick, with, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. One of the, not, one of the big, biggest, uh, number ones of all time. If you've not heard that enough, already. You're followed then by, uh, John Lennon's Imagine. <laughs> Candle in the Wind, Elton John. You've got, uh, All, all on one on CD, Stephen. Well, it's- These are some of the greatest uh, rock minds. They've chosen some of the best songs by some of the best artists. Uh, Paul McCartney's Mull of Kintyre. <laughs> 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 That's on there. Uh, we've got, uh, let me see- Culture That is pretty impressive though, because they are real big classic number ones, as opposed to, you know, the, 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 the song by the artist they didn't really care about. You see those things on, uh, this is not available in the shops, and it's, you know, the second best song artists have done. It seems odd that we're giving it away on XFM because it includes, uh, Robbie Williams' Angels, yeah. uh, Atomic Kitten's Hole Again, Spice sure. Girls' Wannabe, Connie Minogue's uh, Can't Get You Out of the Head, and I think it closes, well it almost closes with Steps Tragedy. That's the penultimate track. It ends though, uh, any ideas? Yes. It's a big, big hit single. But Do they know it's Christmas Band-Aid? Perfect for your uh, Christmas sure, party. Sure, sure, that. sure. Uh, we've sure. also got the uh, Groove Armada current album, is that yeah, from there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and signed by the man himself, the Big Beach Boutique, uh, DVD, Fat Boy Slim's, uh, concert on that Brighton Beach. And, uh, there's all kinds of treats on there. Uh, and includes a, um, an audio commentary <laughs> by, Nor by Norman Cook. I don't know how that works. Three hours of him going, this is where the needle almost jumps. Yeah, Watch exactly. for this. I did a little bit of scratching. I'm not very good at scratching, but just uh, a point to that. I'm putting a, putting a different track. You'll see me there. Yeah. There's the crowd loving it. Excuse me. I'm just waiting for, this is where I, I put, I go see. from, uh, I go from Conga Squad to Basement Jacks. Yeah. Look forward to that. That's one of my own. I'll pop on what you see there. I've got, I've got Praise You Ready on <laughs> Yeah, I've just got, got that. That's, that's slightly dusty. I just had to wipe that down with a damp rag. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> look forward to that. Plus, uh, I suppose this is good if you're a fan. This is uh, a box set of the first series of Linda Green. I think a new series starts this week or has already started. I'll yeah. tell you what I found when I was clearing up, Rick, because I know there's not a big movie this week and we normally give away a big movie. Oh. I was moving house this week and yeah. I found a video that you're more than welcome to if you're a fan. Um, um, no, it stars Kurt Russell. Executive decision. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that to give away if you're interested. Uh, Executive decision with Steven Seagal in a uh, cameo as well. So, uh, <laughs> oh, I think it's I think it's on TV this week, Rick. So if you miss it this coming <laughs> Friday, five? you don't tape it this Friday. Well, here it is on video. Bring videos. it in because I think Carl's excited about that. I think Carl would like to win that, There's wouldn't he? Great prizes well, there. How about if you come up with an extra Rockbusters today? For the, for the, like, the bonus prize. I don't think I'm the man for the job, Carl. I think it has to come from your unique yeah. take on the world. Carl, you don't, I don't think you've quite worked out why you're funny <laughs> and why things you do are good. Go on then. Right, you ready then? So, uh, just in case, uh, you haven't heard it before, I give you some initials of a band or an artist. We're not doing rock buses now, are we? Yeah, I thought, well, we'll just- Oh, we, we can keep that going, then we got- well, I, I love educating Ricky, that's my favourite thing now. Well, what, what do you want to do, Steve? I oh, mean, it's, 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 it's just- just- let's see the clues. It's, it's just different. like you've- it's- it's sort of bigged up the prizes. And, and so this is only by email. Give the email address out now for people to write it down now, Carl. Right, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Only entries on email. Yeah. You're gonna get three clues, you've gotta get them all right. And you win all the You stuff. win all those prizes, you said. Okay, Carl, go on then. Right, and just a quick example, uh, the f one of the first ones we did, it was like AK and the clue was Exploding Pet. Yeah. And it was Atomic, atomic Kitten, kitten right? Yeah. So you understand how it works now. These right. are your clues. The first one, um, <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> so that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and the initials there are DW. Do you okay. write some of the questions for 15 to 1? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So that army has got, got some similar well phrasing. Nice trenches, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what were the initials there, Carl? On that person. D D W. D W. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> He acts it out there. We've got to get him on telly. We have got to get him on telly because his little face and his so that's, his gestures. That's and the second one. The initials being H V. Okay. The top of those curtains are wrecked. All the materials all worn out. Right. H V. <laughs> and, <the laughs> and the final one. Um, here's the final clue. Um, I was in Texas the other week. Right. I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> 
<laughs> what's the, what's uh, the initials? WH for that one. So I was in Texas, I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's WH. Incredible. <laughs> He's got it! Is it right. great? It's fantastic! <laughs> okay, right. time to join the record, time to join the record. Yuri, you're playing for uh, these okay. uh, compilation albums. We've got the Fat Boy Slim DVD, Linda Green oh. on VHS. And of course, uh, <laughs> Executive Decision, starring Kurt Russell as well. Oh! Just Like a Woman on XFM 104.9. Couple more names, uh, boxing nicknames for you, Rick. I think this is from Josh. Uh, Ricky Blue Eyes, I quite like. Uh, and uh, he's also put Toad Rage. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> which I quite like. Uh, I'll tell you, our number one fan is emailed again. I'm pleased to uh, announce. Who? Richard Anderson, Dickie Anderson. He was in touch Anders last week. Anders is back. Anders he is back. loves this show. He's such a fan of the show. And this week he's emailed in, what actually is the point of your show? Is it to confuse, irritate, depress, or what? All of those things, Dickie. Thanks for, uh, no. Oh, he loves this show. <laughs> he's such a fan. He's such a fan. He's, he's Cause brilliant. last week, you remember, Carl, he emailed in to say that he'd rather spend his time counting his feet than listen to this show. Presumably he's done that. Yeah. And he's- Well, how many? Well, how many feet? Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but he's, he loves this he's show. Good, yeah. So, uh, thanks, uh, R.A. <laughs> thanks for listening. See you later. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Educating Ricky? Yeah. Should I do a bit of that? Well, they're, they're, the, the clues are coming in, f uh, Furious. The yeah. answers, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So go on in. Oh, this is what- Yeah, uh, Rockbusters is well underway, Carl, don't worry, you've done yeah. your work now. Okay. Right, come on. Um, right, educating Ricky. This is my favourite bit now. Uh, You're just gonna tease us, aren't you, with three, uh, headlines if- And I'm gonna choose one, and then we got the other two as well. Yeah, that's go the on. way it works, and at the end of it, you learn some stuff. Like I say, I'm struggling a bit with- <laughs> with- with knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at last he confesses. <laughs> yeah, go um, on. Um, so the three headlines for you to pick from, we've got, um, first one, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I got a, I got a feeling there's some vegetables involved. Uh, yeah, uh, go on. Maybe. Second one, um, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Okay. All right. All right. And, uh, <laughs> third one, um, <laughs> I'll bake on in the morning, if you're sick of having me here. Oh, that one. I'll bake on in the morning if you're sick of having me. Right, here. I'm having that one. That's brilliant. Right, well, it's a saying. <laughs> Do you know, um, cold shoulder? Giving someone the cold shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, if you have someone round at your house and, um, you know, you, you try to get rid of them and they're hanging around and stuff and you're like, oh, I wish I wish they'd go, I'm tired and that. Well, years ago, um. When? Literally years ago. Well, ages ago. Sort of, uh, times. I think it said medieval times. Yonks ago then, yonks ago. Yeah. <laughs> medieval, we, yeah. We, we're going back quite a bit on this Well, one. you know when you find out these books, well, it just popped down when it was. Just make a note. I don't think it says all the time, it just sort of says, you know, a few years back. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. Well, Never. Uh, Alright, I'll make an effort next week. Okay. Right? So, oh, it's annoying that, because my girlfriend said to me, just make a note at the time, they'll stop having a go at you. Yeah. Yeah? And I kind of thought, oh, it, it's all right. Didn't, didn't listen. <laughs> I don't think it matters anyway in this one. We're looking at the saying, right? So yeah. it's giving someone a cold shoulder, shoulder, right? <laughs> and what it is, right, ages ago, uh, there weren't enough houses for people. Right. Because there wasn't much money being made. You know, they weren't big businesses, people weren't earning good money like they are now. So, there wasn't as many houses, right? right. So what you, what you ended up getting is like, uh, you know, the rich people having a nice place to live. Oh. And the poor people were like wandering about, you know, looking for places to live and that. And what they ended up doing is, they had like, uh, people would go around to the mate's house and say, look, I haven't got anywhere to live, it's a bit cold, can you let me stay? Right? So they'd go, uh, oh, all right, then you can stay a couple of days. But they ended up staying for like weeks. Yeah. Right? So, to sort of get rid of them, what they'd end up doing, they'd be making the dinner and they'd, uh, be making a lovely dinner like, uh, bit of meat, nice warm meat and, uh, nice veg. Yeah. Gravy and This stuff. happened every time, did it? <laughs> it <works. laughs> this is where the saying came this from. This is what happened, Rick. This, this is, is what happened. happened every time. It was in that vague book. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the book of vague <laughs> sayings and stuff. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so yeah, so they'd be making a nice meal, but what they did, they looked after all the family, but the person who won't go home, mm. they just give them some, like, sort of a cut off of cold meat. Right. So they'd say, 
you're giving them the cold shoulder. Oh. Uh, meaning. Right. <laughs> okay, that's, that's rubbish. Um, okay, uh, absolute. <laughs> Carl, no, why would that necessarily work? Yeah, yeah. Why is do, why, why do they always, in every situation when you want to get with a lodger, well, still feed him every day, but make the meat lukewarm. <laughs> so we They always to... leave then. Yeah. Oh, this food's lukewarm. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna become homeless and again, they go, wandering the hold streets. Hold on, are you giving me the cold shoulder? <laughs> yes. Do you want me to leave? Yes, just say leave him. No, I like, I like to do it cryptic. <laughs> that way, in years to come, yeah. someone will have a little saying about it. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that was our bacon in the morning. Uh, yeah. If you've got enough for me, we'll leave that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll... <laughs> Oh, bacon <laughs> in the morning! Oh, bacon in the morning if you've had enough of me! <laughs> so, so uh, we'll come back. What are the others? Just tease us again with the others. We'll come got, back to those. You've got, he's a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> nice. Looking forward okay. to that. Okay. The World of David Bowie tune. Yeah. Good. Good tune. Good tune. Taken good tune. from that, uh, new Nirvana compilation. I like that version, I like the David Bowie version. You can't decide, can you, Rick? You're torn. In fact, I like the Lulu version as well. Is there a Lulu version? Maybe we should play that one, Why? Rick. Yeah. Was this recorded, what, in the 70s? I think she recorded it about the same time right. as David Bowie. I, I, don't, I don't know if he released it as a single. I think it was just on a... Yeah, so, uh, off the album. Interesting. Carl, Carl, Carl is studying. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the next Educating well, Wiki? I don't know, uh... See, like I say, I was lo looking around and this stuff that is interesting. Right, I was looking on the web. But there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, uh... Um, what's the point? About a lad who, um, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> Is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know. Where did you read that? That was on the internet. No! Well, yeah. Um... Y you're always unspec unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse the computer. Ah! <laughs> 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 ah! Go! You are... No, I did, I did yeah, a, no, honestly. I did a search, put in Y, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that? Why is that? And it had a picture of this eight-year-old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, <laughs> is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Are you sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> uh, what, you, but I put in why? <laughs> Just to confuse the computer. <laughs> like, we were going, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, well, yeah, uh, last week I, I was walking, um, uh, home with him and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid and I went, I've got a competition for next week, let's do a phone in and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool, Yeah. right? And he went, no, no, I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing because they say there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> Do that, don't we? No, that's, no, 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 but it, it's rubbish and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius and, oh. you know, it's a d ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius <laughs> and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what would you do there though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up, what would you do? That lad loves his mum's... <laughs> His mum's milk. What are you ta what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm a just- A title for the- the story- No, 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 it's what? just- it's just what would you do? Right. What do you I mean what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area, right? <laughs> what area? In- in America, I think it was. Oh, America are a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid. Well, who's no, breastfeeding right, the eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carl, what are you asking me? About this spurious story you saw on the internet. I saw on the internet. There's yeah. an eight-year-old lad. He likes his mum's milk, yeah. and it's saying, "Is this right? Should it?" No, it's not. On? But what? What? What, <laughs> what do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> <laughs> Going, this isn't right. You know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> What should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this, look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean, what would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> I, 
No, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. What are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and no, the I'm public? I'm just saying, say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right? The kid's hungry, eight years old, he's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mom, I'm getting a bit peckish and he goes, all right, son. She whops one out. <laughs> Um, and he starts having his, having his milk, right? <laughs> you live, you live next door, you're putting your washing out, and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it, cause it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you, me... why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought, I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, cause he likes it. And I go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> and you think that would sort that out? No, because I, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's breast, right. right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. <laughs> it's like, you don't see, it got me thinking about things you don't see, and you don't see... <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never... <laughs> Oh, so what? Oh, <laughs> you, know the, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve, is he's right. You don't see it all No, man I know, that's a but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right, they've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with rulers. <laughs> Is that a song? Oh, oh God! You don't see it. <laughs> no, no, listen now. So they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> Look at him. You think he's it. giving a lecture yeah, at Oxford? It's, it's not going anywhere. No, go know? on. Sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now he doesn't look right, so he's having. <laughs> Right. I don't think were those originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've mm. noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. No, I so think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and gets, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> and a damn curly whirly granddad, you old fool. <laughs> 104.9 sums up the show. Danger high voltage. <laughs> <Indeed. laughs> Ricky Giovanni's with me, Steve Merchant, and the amazing Carl Pilkington. So, other things you don't see, Carl? Got any other ones? Or you obviously been thinking about this? Um, what confuses you when you look out your window? What confuses you with the world? What would you walk around going, "Oh, that's a bit weird"? I remember um, when you were in uh, Edinburgh, you were confused because you saw someone putting a parking ticket on some rubbish, <laughs> which confused yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That, that was weird. Yeah. Um, the world's a crazy place, isn't sure. it? I mean, whatever you look at, you can... <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like what? Like what? Well, oh, anything. I mean, you could look out the window there and you'll see something you go, why are they, why are they doing that? Yeah. What are they doing that for? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this, uh, this, maybe we should bring back White Van Carl. There's some interesting questions this week, Rick. Yeah. We could, we could pull that out of the bag if you want to. Shall we do that? Just, uh, get, uh, Carl's take on, uh, the world's... Let's do it, let's do it. I'll tell you what, we'll do that in a second. Let's have another Educating Ricky, because well, I think you got sidetracked with your, your, your talk of... Well, just the other thing on things you don't see, look at the way when I went to school, there was two kids with them big heads. Mm. Now, you don't never see them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. no one else saw them anyway, Carl. It's only you that saw two of them, not related, and wouldn't hang around with each other because you think they thought it would be too obvious. Yeah. <laughs> webbed, webbed fingers and big heads. That's amazing. And there was a kid with a pigeon chest, so. Oh yeah, and the, and the, the lady with the head, like a bag of spuds. Oh, Let's not go through these again. It just raises too many questions that can't be answered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right then, so, um, we've got, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Yeah, go okay. on. Is that the one you want? Let's yeah. go for it. Right, um, I think this was like round the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> He's bluffing. Um, and He's bluffing. Who it's, it's it was the king then? Mm. Don't know. Go on. But it's, uh, it's about the word bon bonfire, right? Bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. Do you know where it comes from? No, go on. No. Right, what happened is it's got nothing to do with Guy Fawkes and that, which is what I thought when I saw it. It's got nothing to do with that. But ages ago, at 1700s, yeah. right, um, the, um, didn't have enough houses, like I mentioned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, if that happens, you get people living on the streets. Uh -huh. You get sure. diseases, people aren't cleaning properly. Yeah. So, you get more deaths. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Yeah. So think about it. You've got all these dead bodies lying around. Uh, they're running out of space because it's like I don't know. I don't know why they're running out of space. But <laughs> okay. They haven't. They haven't got much. I don't know why. Really. <laughs> I was going to say they should have just buried them, but <laughs> yeah, there's probably more land back then than now. <laughs> <laughs> like, he doesn't need anyone else in the room <laughs> to have, have a conversation with himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could leave and we'd come back and you go, I'm sorting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, for some reason. Um, they, they presumably, if, it, if it's going to be they burnt them, it's presumably to do to, to, that it also kills the parasite or, or whatever's carrying the parasite on them as opposed to burying them and not killing the disease. Well, yeah. So that's what that, there you go, you've worked it out. They, they piled them up <laughs> and they turned it into a celebration because there was a lot of fed up people at that time. <laughs> Is this to be the word bon, meaning good? No, 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 I'll oh, tell you in a minute. Go on. So you've got all these people who are like going around and like, oh, you know, so and so died the other day. And, you know, nearly every week someone they knew was dying. Yeah. So you can imagine like just constant like being depressed. Mm. So, and they've got all these bodies lying everywhere. It's like, oh, God, what are we going <laughs> to do? So they said, we're all too fed up at the moment. <laughs> said, let's let's make this a better world. This was 1701 by the time they got together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they said, uh, what we need to do is uh, have a big party. Mm, so mm. they said, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. See what you're thinking. So um, they go, right, well, we'll put all the bodies yeah. in a big pile. Mm -hmm. And they're all diseased and that. So yep. they set f they set fire to the bodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, and they said let's uh, have this as a celebration to remember them mm -hmm. by. And you know uh, we'll we'll have a drink and that and have a chat. We'll have this big fire going, and it came from bone fire. Ah right. So bone it was fire. it was it was all the bones. Bomb fire is is bone fire. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah? yeah, that's interesting. So that's that's how it came about. Yeah, in the 1700s. Yeah, that was. No, nah, probably. Okay. I, I reckon it was 1600. Probably earlier. I probably reckon yeah. it was the plague. Hmm. Hmm. I right. reckon it came from. But uh, interesting stuff. Interesting. Yeah, so stuff. That, that's. Yeah. Uh, Did you celebrate Bonfire Night? Is that a big celebration for you? <laughs> Do you like the fireworks? I'm sick of fireworks. I just think it's the, they're rubbish. Is yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not impressed. I've never been impressed by fireworks. No. Even as a kid, you know, you have to go to like sort of community kind of get gatherings with a bonfire and fireworks, and yeah. some local vicar or whatever would come out. And but I also think the adults serious. think the kids love it, yeah. and, 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 and if they just got together and said, "Should we go see it?" They'd all go, "No." Yeah, let's not absolutely. Let's not go this yeah. year. It, what would be better is if the vicar had wheeled out like a massive rocket, yeah. climbed in, yeah. gone last <laughs> one to the moon is a bender, <laughs> and then fired himself <laughs> off. And that, I'd pay to see. That's a firework <laughs> display I'd like to see. As it is, it's just oh, rubbish. Oh dear. Yeah. That's, that's excellent. excellent. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not keen. No. Sorry, what, what, what clue was that? Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Genius. What, what, what are we doing? Are we, uh, final one? Yeah. Right, the last one. Like it's No, no, no. Say, say the record. Say yeah. the record you played. Go on. This is, uh, Free Association. Yeah, brilliant. Of right. Shadow Wood Not. Yeah, and what did you just say to me just before this was ending? He just looked, he just looked over me and went, are there any animals without a brain? No, hang on a minute. No, 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 wait, wait. And I went, yeah, there's animals that are. He went, oh, I was going to talk about this, but it's sad. There's a lad born without a brain, and he laughs a lot, and his hearing and his sight's okay. I'll go, well, that's impossible. You, you, if, if he was without a brain, th all that is impossible. When he went, where well, it was in the <laughs> magazine. <laughs> no, it was in a book that somebody sent. Right. And I didn't want to bring it up, because it is a bit sad, really. Now, this, you know, young lad, it is a picture of him sat there with his mum, and, uh, what, and uh, Carl! Well, Carl! Forget it. it. It's impossible. Well, there must have been more to the story, He Carl. can't not have a brain. Hearing and sight is a concept within the brain. It's that's all it is, right? Yeah. The ears are yeah. just receptacles. They're just, yeah. So. Well, but that's why it was in this book. It was a book of mysteries. Carl, you know, if you, if you, if you, <laughs> Carl, if you're <laughs> reading a book and you see a photo and you guess <laughs> at what you think the story might be, that doesn't make it true. That no, doesn't make yeah, it true. I, I looked at it because I thought he looks like an happy lad. Sure. And, and I read about it and I thought, that's weird. Like you've said, the fact that he hasn't got a brain but he can see and he can hear. No! Impossible! Right. Uh, impossible. <laughs> okay. Go well, on. I, d I don't know who to believe. <laughs> Listen, uh, we haven't done it for a while. White Van Man. I thought yeah, there's some back, interesting questions back. raised today, and yeah. I think it might be nice to just well, them back. Well, I think we set Carl up again in the last hour as a person that people want to know yeah, they his know opinions on the world. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, yeah. if you're not familiar with it, uh, on Saturdays the Sun newspaper um, asks a typical white van driver questions uh, his opinions on the week's news, mm. and uh, we thought we'd throw these in the direction of Carl. Um, yeah. 
Good. And then what do you make, uh, what do you make of, uh, this teenage thug, Carl, Mickey Carroll, who spent four months in jail and he's won 9.7 million on the uh, lottery? Is that justice? When you think of all the good people that are going hungry? And there's a lad there and he's won Did he buy the ticket before 7. he went in? Uh, no, I think he bought it once he came out. So he's, he's done his time. He's done his time. Fair enough then, he's, he's been punished. Yeah. Right? He's bought a ticket. He's had a lot of bad luck. Mm hmm Now he's having a bit of good luck. Good all right, next one. Are you next concerned one. that now he's got all that money he could turn into like a sort of mastermind villain? You know, like a James Bond style villain? He's Ooh. got a criminal streak, we know that. Is that a concern for you? Well, I mean, we imagine don't. that he could build we, some kind of underwater fortress. We don't, with, with, with my lawyer's hat on, we don't know that. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd have to prove that he didn't have a criminal streak. <laughs> I'd say, have you been in jail for four months? Yeah. yeah sometimes but people are bad because they haven't got any money, so he might be just an angel of gold now. Or yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One in five children aged between 11 and 16 go on booze binge sessions at least once a week. That's terrifying news, isn't it? Kids, they, they know, they know too much now. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can spare. To you, you yeah. Spare. Yeah. Know, right? yeah. Listen to this one, right? Go on. Me, me dad had me, uh, niece in the car, right, running her to school one day. And, uh, she was in the back of the car with a mate and they were chatting away about stuff like kids do. Um, and they got onto the topic of one of the mates who said, uh, I mean, you've got to remember, the niece, this point was probably about five or six, something mm. like that, right? Mm. In the back of the car talking about my little pony, whatever it is they play with. Uh, subject changed. Um, oh, that Lisa in, uh, in our class, she's a lesbian, isn't she? Right. <laughs> that was the top, that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Chatting away about it. <laughs> Just openly talking about yeah. lesbianism. And probably, you know, <laughs> this is the topic that they're talking about in the pub when they're having fun. <laughs> Out drinking. Yeah. Yeah, but they might have thought a lesbian was a, a, a you know, a, a funny word or something. You don't necessarily know the, the ins and outs of it, do they? It's, it's weird though, isn't it? Because when I was, when I was younger at school, you didn't like, I mean, you swore a little bit, but it wasn't like major swear words. And you sort of did a little bit of nicking, but nothing like to get up to now. I mean, if... My, my, um, girlfriend, when she was about seven or eight, she was walking to school with her mum, and she called her a C-U-N. You are Joe. No, she said, oh, you are, because she thought it was a big, she said she thought it was a big furry animal. She thought, so she was being nice, and I was like, where'd you do that? Where'd you do that? Like, just heard it at school. So they might, you know, they might not know what it means. Well, I tell you, you know, um, I have to, I'm gonna have to use kind of euphemisms here to tell this story, but when I was at school, I learned, you know the stronger version, it's not the same word, but it's very similar with one letter change. I'm gonna use twit. Yeah. You know the word I'm thinking of. Yeah. But I'm, I'm gonna use the word twit to replace it, right? And I said, I went round. Do you think that's what? Yeah. Alright. That's, that's what I'm thinking of. And, um, so can I say it? Am I allowed to say it? No, no it's, it's, not, not, it's weird though, because no, hang on, some it? people look from Cornwall use that like saying twit. So, if people well, are listening to Cornwall, do you know think, a twit think, is a pregnant goldfish. Well, well, uh, I I learned the uh, I learned the stronger version of twit. Yeah, um, twat. <laughs> 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 For those that aren't sure. <laughs> um, I, I learned this in school when I was like 10 or whatever, and I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was just a stronger version of twit. Yeah. I thought it was just if you were really annoyed with someone because they were yeah. a real twit. Because uh, I is worse than I. <laughs> exactly, yeah. apparently. So, you <laughs> know, Carl would be a twit. And, yeah. um, and so I started using this at home because I didn't realise what it meant. I started using this at home. Oh, you twit, you're a twit. And saying it to my dad, you're a twit, you know, but yeah. I'm not saying twit. Yeah. And my dad didn't know what it meant either. Great. Well, I can believe. So he started using it as well, right? So uh, then we'd be driving in the car, he'd be saying to my mum, you stupid do it. Yeah. And he'd say to my mum, you, 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 don't pull over, pull over, you're gonna bother you. He was saying this. Then I learned at school from Mark Johnson what it really meant. Yeah. Stopped using it, obviously finding out it was quite an offensive word. Yeah. Couldn't, I didn't want to bring it up to my dad. I didn't want to sit my dad down and say, dad, you know that word we've been saying? Yeah. You know what it means? So now, to this day, I never brought it out with him. So we'll be driving, you know, I'm uh, going for Christmas, we'll be driving around, he'll be calling my mum that word. <laughs> Left, right and centre. I think she knows. I think she's just embarrassed. Or she's just upset and she knows what it means. She goes, why does he keep calling me this terrible word? <laughs> but he's the only one, I think, in our family who doesn't know what it means. No one's oh. got the guts to say. I don't know whether I should tell him this oh, Christmas. Oh, what a twat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> good to hear that again. Always good to hear that. Swade. Animal nitrate. Carl's all flustered because there isn't a, a, a record set up and he's getting all 
tizzy. He's been more worried about his competitions than sorting out putting records on ready. Uh, what? I'm after to start Steve's song for a love. Well, I'll tell you what, you, uh, why didn't you carry on with your, uh, educating Ricky section? I'll have a look on the, uh, on the screen. We'll keep it going, Steve. Yeah, Cover you it. Go on. Go on then, right, okay. We've All had, right. we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, got it right? Ricky, educating Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbusters as well, we though. We can do that at the end. We can whip Go on then. But we've only got five minutes left. Come on, just do educating Ricky. Right. Oh, God. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I, t I spoke to him in the week and he had much better things, like when I tell you about Brian Blessed climbing Everest and for some reason it made him, uh, it uh, played havoc with his belly and what? he followed through and he had to clean up. He shot himself. Yeah, using, um, using ice and stuff. Why do you tell- why are you telling me that Brian Blessed- what, what- in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he- he- he was climbing Everest, right? Right. I give it to him, he's an actor and that, but he- he gave that a go. Yeah. Right, he played- What's the know, point of that, you'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's- he's, you know- he's Oh, so he's alright. I uh, me- me doing a boxing match for no reason is rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself- Yeah, he did is, that. Is commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, but what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it been. Well, it has. They've probably, uh, they've uh, probably cleared right. it up by now. Right, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it slip on it. I can't even really just telling you this one, cause- Come on! Just honest, do it, or do it now! Steve, how are we doing? Look, no, no, never mind that. Look, just tell me what that means! Uh, oh, he's a nuisance. Oh, this is so annoying, Carl. I'm gonna go mental. Right, talk! Right, right listen, I'm just putting right. this in here, right? Right, nuisance is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the old fella who used to hang people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be able to tell somebody's weight just by looking at them. Right? Um, that's a bit of a bonus fact. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. The, 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 thing, <laughs> the, the thing that I wanted to tell you yeah. is, um, money for old rope, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't, even, I can't even be bothered. <laughs> yes, you're gonna tell me now. Come on, Carl. Right, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the t right. What was all that about? He can tell someone's weight. <laughs> that Wasn't was that bonus for? Fight. And blind blessed shitting himself. What are you? What? No, tell you. No, tell me that now. You nearly made me swear. Then just I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Tell me this back, Carl. Or I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> Come on, Carl. Time's running out. Not that people years ago. When people used to be hung, right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, you'd go, God, I really don't like him. And, to, and so you never forget the time. Because if they're being hung, we take that as red. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope and to cut it up into little pieces and he'd sell them. He'd sell the little pieces of the rope to people. And See, that, uh, so Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's, what's, you, so they, they sell the rope? They sell the rope and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope. Meaning, like, you know, God, it's easy to make money, that, that all they have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm cynical. <laughs> I'm not so convinced right, listen, though. We're, we're really tight, we haven't even got time for a last joke, we've got an ad break and we've got to give out- Okay, questions. give the answers then, this is right. ridiculous. So, Come Steve, on. do you want to pick a winner? Uh, I've got oh. a winner when you give us the answers. Okay, so the first clue was, uh, that army has got some well nice trenches. Yeah. That was DW. Who's that? Dandy Warhols. <laughs> It's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. Right. That's good, yeah. Uh, the second okay. one. The top of them curtains are wrecked, all yeah. the material is worn. Yeah. HV, that's yeah. uh, Holly Valance. Oh, he got a phone call for a woman saying I haven't heard it and she went, she was, he was talking to her off air and she went, uh, what is it? Uh, so and so, so them curtains went, alright. Oh, he said, you know the thing around the top of those um, curtain is a palmet, not a valance? And he went, cut her off. Yeah, but. <laughs> My aunt is always making balances on everything. I'll tell you about that next week. Right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right. Is this the one that farted for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, the very same. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, we'll talk about that. Uh, I was in Texas, I tripped up, I landed on my knees in a puddle, WH, yeah. uh, wet near Houston. 
Right. Wetney Houston. Yeah. So, You're a maniac. So, who's a winner? We've got Pete, Catherine and Laura in Newcastle upon Tyne. They're listening uh, online, I assume, and uh, oh, they're going to get digital. those great places. And remember, they've got loads of stuff. They've got uh, the DVD here, they've got Linda Green, they've got Stone Roses, they've got another compilation, and Executive Decision. What did you read about Brian Blessed? Is it actually true, or have you a live or no, something? No, it was an interview with him, innit? And what did he say? Oh, Come on, what did he say? He said I, I climbed Everest and uh, I played off it with me belly. Uh, let's talk about it next week. We've really run out now. Oh, you're a fool. <laughs>